Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bito. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 276 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Pitto. People the world over are fascinated with the classic Maya. The monumental architecture of their impressive cities draws countless tourists to these fascinating Mesoamerican sites. At the height of its civilization, the ancient Maya were masters in astronomy, art, and mathematics. Their writing system survives to tell tales of kings and battles and homage paid to the gods. By 900 AD, most of classic Maya civilization had collapsed, and a majority of the once mighty cities were abandoned. There was a brief renaissance of Maya culture at the famous city of Chichen Itza after most of its neighbors fell apart, but by about 1100 AD, that city too had been abandoned. The high civilization associated with this ancient people was never to be seen again after this time. So what happened in the Maya area between the disintegration of Chichen Itza in the 12th century and the arrival of the Europeans in the early 1500s? From the ashes of the old city-states and dynasties of the Yucatan emerged what archaeologists and historians refer to as the League of Mayapan. Researchers are still unclear how to label this league. Was it a group of associated states? Was it a confederation? Was it a series of chiefdoms or primitive kingdoms whose rulers were interrelated? It seems that after Chichen Itza collapsed, there was a void to fill and the city of Mayapan rose to the occasion. According to native sources after the conquest, this city was built after the surviving Maya nobility in the Yucatan decided to come together and construct a regional capital city. The city still exists today, in ruins and open to the public, located 25 miles southeast of Merida, the modern-day capital of the Mexican state of Yucatan. The construction of Mayapan took place around 1150 AD. No written records, no glyphs or complete texts on monumental architecture exist from this time to give exact dates or the exact form of government here. Archaeologists are still trying to work out the timeline of events in the early phases of the League of Mayapan. According to oral histories recorded by the Spanish, the first king of Mayapan who was tasked with overseeing the administration of this loose confederation of allied states, came from the Kokom family, a wealthy and powerful royal line that stretched back to the classic Maya civilization of the pre-900s. Royal families ruling the associated states were obligated to send one member to Maya Pond to serve on an administrative council for the League. Some researchers believe that these royal delegates were also potential hostages used in political bargaining if their respective states ever got out of line. Some oral accounts of Mayapan also mention the Xiu family, along with the Kokoms. The Xiu supposedly ruled the area around the new city of Mayapan long before the Kokoms rose to prominence. Some stories claim that the Shus were the direct descendants of the rulers of Ushmal and had dominated the western Yucatan since around 500 AD. For more information about this ancient Maya site, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 185 called Ushmal, Lost City of the Dwarf. In any case, the council made up of the noble representatives most likely ruled the League, headed by a member of the Kokom family, as a sort of paramount ruler or administrator. That position of the supreme ruler was formally called the Shalachwinik. He most likely shared some of his power with the Ajkin, or high priest. The noble representatives who came from the various regions of the Yucatan to serve on the council most likely had specific roles they filled, 
much like heads of committees in the legislatures of modern democratic republics. There was probably a lot of infighting and rivalry at Mayapan by these nobles who were jockeying for position or busy currying favors. It is unknown to what degree the relationships among the federated city-states were antagonistic or peaceful. Archaeologists do know for sure that in the mid-1400s the city of Mayapan was sacked, burned, and abandoned. Oral tradition surviving after the Spanish conquest claims that a member of the Xu family named Ah Chupan led a rebellion in which the city was destroyed and every member of the Kokom family was executed, except for one of the sons of the king, who was on a diplomatic mission to a small Maya kingdom located in modern-day Honduras. According to these oral tales, this all happened in the year 1441, which would loosely correlate to the archaeological evidence that the city of Mayapan was burned to the ground sometime in the mid-1400s. After a good run of about 300 years, the League of Mayapan dissolved and a new political structure would emerge in the Yucatan Peninsula. After the fall of Mayapan, the Yucatan reorganized itself into a group of 17 independent kingdoms or chiefdoms called Cuch Cabals. A Cuch Cabal was divided into municipalities or counties called Betalibs, ruled by a Batab who was also a military leader. Each Kuch Cabal was headed by a male ruler called Halach Winik, but some of these new countries experimented with a more representational form of government. A few were ruled at various times in their histories by what would look somewhat like a modern-day Senate or House of Representatives. The Betalibs, or counties, would send delegates to the capital city to sit in the legislative body to rule the Kuch Cabal instead of being subject to an absolute monarch. Most of these new political entities were ruled by one strong man or a small group of leaders from the old noble families. Here are the names of the 17 Kuch Cabals in the pre-Hispanic Yucatan. Akab, Chakan Putum, al Kanul, Sepech, Tutulshu, Sotuta, Hokaba, Chakan, Akinchel, Kupul, Tazes, Chikinchel, Waimil, Chetumal, Kochua, Kanpech, and Kolutmol. Each Kuch Cabal was fully independent. Each had a capital city that was the center of commerce and government but these cities did not even come close to the monumental stone metropolises of the classic Maya of 500 years before. It is not known if or to what extent that these political entities had treaties of friendship, economic relations, or formal alliances among one another. From the oral traditions and the physical evidence found in the archaeological record, the Kuch Cabals of the Yucatan did war amongst themselves. Boundaries between these polities may have been shifting or very ambiguous, especially in dense forest territory. It is almost impossible for modern researchers to draw solid lines on a map to delineate the Kuch Cabals. The wealthiest and most powerful of the post-League of Mayapan chiefdoms was Kupul, located in the north-central part of the peninsula. Kupul's territory included Chichen Itza, which was still being occupied even though it had lost its glory of centuries before. For most of its history, Kapul was landlocked and fought with its neighbors to the north, Chikinchel, for access to the sea. There is a record of Kapul at one point having access to, or at least permission to access, the salt beds of the northern coast of the Yucatan Peninsula, but this may have been temporary, or Kapul may have lost a small war with its northern neighbor that ended its access in a more formal way. Kapul's capital city of Saki would later become the Spanish city of Valladolid, which is now one of Mexico's Pueblos Magicos, renowned for its colonial charm. While Cupul was the wealthiest and most powerful of the Cuch Cabals, the northeastern kingdom of Ekab was perhaps the most important because it contained famous and popular religious pilgrimage sites. 
The Cobb was one of the Kuch cabals that had a representative government in the form of a legislative body made up of the Batabs, or rulers of the municipalities or counties. The legislative body met at the capital city of Akab, located on the coast in the far northeastern corner of the Yucatan Peninsula. When the districts, or Betalibs, making up the country of Akab, were supposed to be equal, the Betalib of Cozumel was the most influential at the national level due to the pilgrimage sites mentioned earlier. The island of Cozumel attracted worshippers from as far away as modern-day Nicaragua and Michoacan in western Mexico. The pilgrims were paying homage to the moon goddess Ischel, who was also the patroness of childbirth, weaving, and medicine. On the island there was a temple and a statue to Ischel where worshippers, mostly women, would listen to an oracle, who was a priest, sitting inside the statue. For more information about this goddess, please see Mexico Unexplained episode number 78. Another Kush Cabal of note worth mentioning was Chacan Putum, located in the southwestern part of the Yucatan. This Kuch Cabal was the largest, and its land area comprised over 20% of all the land of the Kuch Cabals. Its capital city, also called Chacan Putum, was described by the first Europeans to see it as a city of 8,000 houses. Chacan Putum was resource-rich, and its most economically viable product was fish. A fleet of 2,000 boats would go out into the Gulf of Mexico to fish, and since the country had many navigable rivers and lakes, fishing was important in the interior of Chacan Putum as well. The territory of this political entity bordered the lands of the Chontal Maya to the southwest, a loose association of villages and small cities with a much weaker and more informal political structure than that of the Kuch Cabals of the Yucatan. August 14, 1502 marked the beginning of the end of the Kuch Cabals, just 60 years after the fall of the League of Mayapan. Christopher Columbus, on board the Santa Maria, during his fourth voyage to the New World, anchored off the coast of modern-day Honduras. It was there where he encountered a merchant vessel from the Kuch Cabal of Akab. Word spread throughout the Maya world of the arrival of these strange foreigners. Nine years after Columbus in 1511, a Spanish ship plying the Caribbean was caught in a storm and shipwrecked on Akab territory. The survivors of the vessel were captured by the Maya and sold into slavery. In 1517, Francisco Hernández de Córdoba landed on Isla Mujeres, also in Acab territory, and from there explored the interior of the Yucatán, encountering fierce resistance. Famous conquistador Hernán Cortés even stopped on the shores of the Cuch Cabal Acab on his way to conquer the Aztecs. After the subjugation of the Aztec Empire, Spanish interest in the Yucatan grew, and between 1527 and 1547, the entire peninsula was conquered. Thus ended a somewhat brief experiment of independent chiefdoms and indigenous autonomy in general in the Yucatan. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank you and good Gracias. Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at MexicoUnexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.